Now we have spent all week looking at scriptures telling us all the ways and reasons to praise God with our voices and instruments in music. But did you know that worship leader or organist aren't in the Bible? This is true. There is no scriptural reference to the office of the worship leader of any sorts. But before you go and try to get me fired, here's a verse that I cling tightly to. It comes from Paul in the book of Ephesians. It says this in chapter 4, verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So Jesus himself created all these types of people to do what? Essentially lead all people to his love for him. And there are actually personality type questionnaires online you can take to see which one or ones you are. I find this really inspiring. I'm sure in all the hustle and bustle of Sundays and Wednesdays and just trying to make sure that the jobs get done, it can be perceived that making music is all I or other worship leaders care about. And maybe that is true for some, but I have always been more interested in the impact that it makes. The truth that music and scripture holds within worship. Music has been said to be of universal language, and so I find that with the gifts that I have been given, and the fact that music has this incredible ability to speak into so many lives, that it can be used to evangelize through the music portion of worship. It wasn't a huge surprise to me when I took that test that evangelist was my highest scoring one. I also find it such a gift to connect with my music team, my staff, my volunteers, my choir, and so on. Being a leader or a minister heading up these teams creates very real and meaningful relationships that often give me such incredible times and opportunities to pastor and love as well as teach these individuals and teams. And similarly, there are other congregants and people from our communities that have that having this office of a worship leader has allowed me to lean into their lives and show them what the love of Jesus has done in my life and so many others. It's easy to look at a worship leader and say, well, all they care about is the music. They just want to be a rock star. But it's just as easy to look at a CEO or a mom or a farmer or a biker or a banker and say the same thing. But are we all so complex? Don't we have such beautiful and messy and awesome lives? Aren't we so often so many things at the same time? One of the greatest mind shifts that I've had in ministry over the past decade is realizing that it's not just the paid staff at the church that is called into ministry. Jesus called us all to be ministers, to evangelize, to pastor, to teach, to love, to show the world that, that to show the world what God has done for us through how we love and treat our neighbors. And I love this quote from Martin Luther. He says, the Christian shoemaker does his duty not by putting little crosses on the shoes, but by making good shoes, because God is interested in good craftsmanship. So my final challenge for you on this final message of the series is, what is God calling you to? Is there a way to become more involved at your place of worship or church? Is there a friend who is in need of some extra encouragement? Is there a neighbor who is lonely or a stranger on the street who needs to be reminded that they are loved unconditionally? Is there a way you can serve your community? How do you show up with the love of God in your heart? Because we might be moms or bankers or CEOs or truck drivers or worship pastors, but first and foremost, we are children of God the Almighty, and I believe we are all called to lead all people to a lifelong faith in Jesus. I mean, it's the least that we can do. Thank you so much for joining me this week. God bless.